I started working on this painting in January last year, I took a walk out in the woods and came across a raven. It was just laying dead, stark, with nothing else around it. It's a very striking image. Whenever you come across anything that's dead, it's just, it's, it's natural, but it's also unnatural. It seems out of place or odd. So it struck me as an interesting scene with the contrast and just the idea of everything. So I took some paper out, sketched it, brought the bird back, sketched it some more, and thought about what I wanted to do with the painting. And I ended up using very little pigments in this painting. It's uh, mostly black and white. Took the bones out of the raven and charred them use that for the black, and then the rest is lead for the white, and then some other stones for the brown kind of colors. Egg tempera is an old medium. It, uh, it was, dates back to Egypt and before. They used it in the Renaissance a lot, before the invention of oil paint. But it's, um, it's egg yolk tempered with the dried pigments. So you take your pigment, mix the egg yolk in, temper it together, and then use that. I use a lot of my own material. So this is a stone from up by Moosehead, the particular spot up there where I collect these. This is some purple slate that I found uh, in green and some uh, river stone. So here's, here's some of those uh, stones from up by Moosehead. I have a variety of mortar and pestles that I use. Some are stone, some are brass. I have a big gallon one that's cast iron. They all work for different reasons. So for this painting I've used a lot of brushes that I've made out of various things. This one is a, a turkey feather with um, squirrel hair in the tip. So you cut the uh, you cut the end off, put the hair in, and then I've glued it on with uh, pine pitch and charcoal. It makes a sturdy glue and holds it in there. This is a, another brush I've made from a squirrel tail. This one is uh, it's a more wispy brush, but this one's fox fur. My paintings start off as watercolors or drawings or sketches that I make. Then when I decide that I really like a particular subject, I'll compile them into a finished painting. I work from life or from my drawings, and I think for that reason, rather than a photograph which gives you a millisecond fragment of it, a painting gives more of a distillation of the time. All the feelings and emotions and the hours and days spent at a particular place, it distills them down and captures the atmosphere and the breath of an area. By using my own pigments in my paintings, it really helps to connect me and engage me in the work and the world around me. When I'm walking down a stream or on the beach, I'm always looking for new materials to incorporate into my paintings. It's really exciting to pick up a stone or a shell and to think of all the potential that's in it. Egg tempera is a very fast drying medium. It's near impossible to blend color, so you have to build up color in small thin strokes and layer and weave them into each other to build up the image. Because of the time that it takes to do an egg tempera, it lends itself very well to meditation and contemplation.
Making my own frames adds another element of locality to my work. I use wood from old barns, pieces that float down the lake, or wood from my friend's sawmill in Palermo. This frame I've made out of a piece of oak I sawed out last fall. I've planed it down, cut it to size, and run it through the joiner. And now I've split the board right down the middle, so the painting will inhabit the space between the two boards where they were once joined together. I then move on to shaping it with block planes and using chisels to carve out the rabbit. After this, all that is left to do is miter the corners, glue it together, and apply a finish. For the finish on this frame, I used black walnut hulls to make a stain. I boiled the hulls in water for about 5 hours and added egg yolk as the emulsifier so then I could add linseed oil into the stain. There's a certain sense of poetry in using material from the land to depict it, a sort of molecular reincarnation. We are all really just dust and earth, and when we die, our bones will dissolve into the land and give new life to the creatures that inhabit it, eventually perhaps taking wing and flying through the air.